Good, good, good. Not bad. Uh, Josephine, uh, Frida from Minnesota. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice I'm to meet you too. Good, good, good. Not good. Uh, hope you brought us something good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's freezing cold in Minnesota all the time too, so I'm kind of like used to the the weather. You don't know how it is in in Minnesota uh, for Nigerians like us that grew up in Nigeria, like yourself. Right. Uh, but do you find the women uh, uh, in 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 America are they vocal like yourself? Do the Nigerian women come out? Uh, community matters, uh, singing, um, expressing themselves. Is that? It depends on the area where you live. Like in Minnesota, it's more um, Caucasian populated than Africans. We have more of like the Somalians in Minnesota than Nigerians. So there's no community at all. It's a zero. Um, we have Ghanaians that have communities, but when you go to places like Texas or uh, Atlanta, they have more Nigerian community. Like even in Minnesota, you can't. It's hard to find like a Nigerian restaurant. We have uh, other country like African countries that cook kind of Nigerian meals, but it's not exactly Nigerian yeah, tasting Nigerian. meals. Yeah. So <laughs> I know because I try them and I'm like, no, that's not Nigerian. <laughs> good, good, good point. You great point you raised, uh, Josephine. You heard her. She said there is not many Nigerians in, in Minnesota. Yeah. Right. Has that made it easier for you to express yourself, you know, because you're in new surroundings or have you found it harder? No, it's it's just something that I've always done when I was growing up. I, I'm just a people's person. I can communicate really good with people. I try to make people comfortable. So um, wherever I go, I, I tend to just, you know, stand out by being more outspoken and trying to have everyone just, you know, be comfortable and um, just communicate. It's, it's just something that I was born with. I'm not sure what. Without, you think Nigerian women will thrive in communities where there's less Nigerians? Well, it depends on the mindset. If right. you, if the mindset is there, you can do anything. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like she rightfully said, right. you know, she's a people's person. And I heard you on radio right. this morning. You have said um, you've always wanted to, you love singing. You started yes. from the church. Yes. And now look at you today. So mm -hmm. it's the mindset because the mind is very powerful. Right. Whatever you set your mind to do, definitely, no matter the obstacles, you would definitely do yeah. it. Right. And I think that's exactly what has landed her in where she is in today. where she is yeah. today. Good. Right. They're well done anyways. That's Thank very you. good. Thank you so much. Mm. Great, great. And this is your, this is, uh, you know, this is your first time in England. Uh, actually, my second time, but this is the first time that I'm I'm, sure I'm actually here for like music and um, interviews, and I'm also going to be shooting a music video tomorrow. So, great! Yeah. You're you're a big you're a big star. You know when they take when they say like things like autobiography and stuff, they want to talk about you know it look like people of you know mm -hmm. Tina Turner and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when I was reading yours. I found out you just produced a movie for uh, Vivica Fox yeah. and uh, Joseph Benjamin. Yeah. I love those people. And let me, and I die. Oh, let me give you. Let me. So, let me. Let me. Let me. Let me uh, yes, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. You know, um, but let's go in. How did you get Vivica Fox? This, this, she's been acting. I heard you say, yeah, I'm yes. 34. Vivica Fox has been in the yeah. in the yeah. industry in the for that for, for, long for that long. Right. How did you, how did right. you do she, that? She's a, she's a, she's an amazing person. So it, it goes to, um, you know, the individual. You can definitely find out how to write to their their team members. So they have like representative. They have like their managers and all of that. So if you can get their contact, which I got from Robert Peters. And Robert Peters is actually the director of the movie, Alexandra. So I got her manager's contact from Robert Peters. And I messaged them, just requesting if Vivica would want to, um, be, if she would be interested in doing the, the film. And she read the script. She loved the fact that I casted her as a female lead detective on the film. And she was all in. She said she's done movie all all her life and all of that and she's never been a lead detective in any yeah. film so my film was the first one and she actually won an award for that too because she was fantastic great she's just a very friendly doing? person great That's very good uh, yeah. uh, i want to ask um it, the category of the movie does it come into nollywood or, or american category uh, yeah. right now they they classify it as a Hollywood, Nollywood film. Because <laughs> oh, it has like Americans and then Nigerians. And that's that's one thing with me. I love inclusivity. Yes, like I love that. to include everything, everybody. Just 
you know, work with everybody. Yeah. I, I was waiting for you to come because I'm sure woman to woman, I'm, I I want to be the third party Josephine. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, this movie is it? Is it on Netflix? Because I'm I want to watch it. <laughs> so yeah, that's the, that's the the other part too. Mm. So we're trying to pitch it to Netflix. Um, okay. uh, my contact has um, movies in Nigeria that were produced in Nigeria, pitched to Netflix, but because mine was filmed in Nigeria and also in the US, right? it's kind of, uh, you know, kind of tricky. So mm. we're trying to pitch it from the US because when okay. you pitch from Nigeria, you get actually uh, offered low budget. <laughs> when you pitch from the US, that's big dog, big money. Mm. So, <laughs> so, but... I like what you've just said. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that is? So the uh, low budget and... I feel like Nigerians, um, I'm not, I don't know like how to put this in the best way possible mm. for it not to be offensive, yeah. but they need to stand their ground. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, ways where um, the things you do here is valued more than when you do it back home and even if it's the same thing. Yes. So Nigerians just need to say no this is what it's worth. This is the value of it because if Beyonce can do it, so can I. Mm -hmm. And if we're doing the same thing, we should be able to get the same outcome. And that's like what happened recently where females in the industry wanted to be paid the same <laughs> amount as males. So that's the same thing too. Almost similar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in Nigeria, if Nigerians could go, hey, Netflix, um, you bought this film which was produced with this budget and my film which is produced with the same exact budget, mm -hmm. but you offer those people $10 million, yeah. for example. So mine should be worth $10 million, regardless of like what currency I'm using mm. in Nigeria or, you know, US. But I feel like Nigerians just accept whatever they're told. Okay. Like when they offer them money, they just take it, okay. which is not supposed to be like that. <laughs> so um, why do you think that is though in Nigeria? And we have the market in diaspora. I feel like they just don't know how to ask for more. That's what I feel like. Like, you know, because if you, if you don't know, then you're not able to execute. Mm -hmm. But if someone would tell them like, hey, Genevieve, the movie you did, if it was produced in America, America, Netflix would give you more offer. Like they would offer to pay you more money. Okay. Okay. She probably oh, doesn't see. know. She okay. got that money that she got, and she's probably very happy. Like, oh, Netflix bought my movie for this amount of money. Mm, but mm. if she had produced it in America, mm -hmm. or if she was an American, she could have gotten way more, like mm -hmm. times three. Mm -hmm. of that. I can see that. So <laughs> it's like, again, it's about you don't speaking know. up. Right. You don't know, so you it's don't. Like, well, yeah. That's what we're saying. Exactly. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to go into Afrobeats now, um, and the whole American industry, even Nollywood. Mm -hmm. um, Nigerians on that side of the pond, do you get as much recognition, you know, Afrobeat, Nollywood in America? Because after Nigeria, it's England. And right. then you have uh, places coming up like Dubai. Right. But I think, how, how, do you, how are you received in America? And I'm going to be brutally honest with you. Nigerians do not even care. If you're not Whiskey, if you're not DeVito, they do not care. They will not support you until you are DeVito. <laughs> so um, they don't care and I've got more support and more love and more um, accolades from the Americans than Nigerian which is very sad because I really want, I'm, I do my music for my people mm. and I want them to enjoy my music I also have uh, music that I've done that is American you know geared towards the American people but my Nigerians do not care you have to be Bonaboy. You have to be the video. You have to be up there before they start giving your accolades. Um, with my music, the first recognition I received was my state uh, TV station coming to my home. They actually called me and said, hey, Frida, I know we, you just graduated college, but you have achieved a lot. You've done a movie. Uh, you've been a uh, cover girl of a magazine. We, we want to come interview you. And I said, I can't because I just had a baby, <laughs> so I'm not going anywhere. The doctor put me on house rest and I had a C-section. And the, the, they offered, they said, we'll bring the crew to your house. And I'm like, what? Wow. What? Wow. So they came to me mm. to interview me. But then, um, now here's where it gets different with my own people, mm. which I love Nigerians because I'm Nigerian, right? Yes. I grew up there, born, you know, I was born there. So here comes my people. I have, I know um, Nigerian promoters in Minnesota, right? 
when they bring in big shots like Whiskey or Bonaboy, they, they, they take American upcoming artists to open for them. That's a wrong move. Let me explain. Now, if Beyonce or Chris Brown was performing, you would never hear me singing, Ego, you giving me Ego. No. They, won't take- they will take their own people. They yeah. will take an American up-and-coming artist to perform for Chris Brown. And those people end up blowing up because now, guess what? Everybody who goes to Chris Brown uh, concert, they know what Chris Brown is about. They know the kind of music like, oh, he does R&B and he's good. So whoever is going to is open for Chris Brown is going to have similar flow, similar mm. kind of genre. But now you go to a Whiskey concert, or all you say is Percocet. That, that Percocet. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. yeah. About, <laughs> they're talking about gun violence. They're singing oh, about, about like, you know, drugs and, you know, just but, but, things but, that Africans are not. I, used to. Mm. I have to say to you, uh, being in the industry myself for a mm-hmm. long time, it's a very uh, unique business when a big act is coming to town. Right. It's they, you're right in the sense that they need to put the connecting, you know, act. Right. But they know that this is a platform for mm-hmm. uh, you understand, yeah. and they know the people in the audience are people from the states, you know, and they seem to look use all those mechanics you know, to look at it. But ultimately, I am from the school where I feel um, each person would shine based on the, their work. Right, you know? and, definitely. And, yeah. Yeah. definitely. And you have now come up with, uh, I don't know, Josephine, she, she, she's not, Afrobeat, this is the first time I've heard it. I've heard that guy in Spain sing, uh, you know, when he sings that Shayu, you know, and then at the end, the third verse was like, Mujua, Mujua, it was like some Spanish stuff, you know. Yeah. And, and you have a full song called Que Pasa. Mm-hmm. You understand? Right. Is, is this influenced by the fact that in Minnesota, yeah. if you have a South American Afrobeat record, you are mm-hmm. more in rather than a, a pigeon. English one and Nigerian one, you know, which one will go further? Kepasa? Um, I feel like what it doesn't even matter what you speak on the song. If the beat moves, moves people, people or, you know, it, it might even be just one lyric, one word in the lyric that moves people and also rep, being repetitive. Like you keep playing that song over and over on the radio. People hear it all the time. They, they go here, they hear it. They, mm. You know, they go to clubs, they hear it. It, it sticks and then it becomes, it goes viral. An example is uh, Whiskey's uh, song, uh, Oju Eleva. That okay. song did not blow up until people start hearing and hearing and listening to That's it true. over and over. And then it blew up later, like mm. way when, after it was released. So that's the thing. So I don't feel like it's what you're saying in the song because even with my songs, I have Pidgin English songs. I have songs that have Yoruba. I have songs that have Igbo in it. And then the Kepasa is Spanish. Uh, so I have, I just mix it all up. You know, I'm just... Putting my legs in like different, yeah. <laughs> different, different sections. Different. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I need to let like Josephine see what the people want. You yeah. know, <laughs> what do you want? I'll give it to you. <laughs> Josephine, it's a woman to woman. I'm here, mm. but I like you know, you know, business. Yeah. You know, so, um, I know you made mention that um, in the morning that you were encouraged by your parents, though they told you that you had to obviously go to university, right? And um, the music should be kind of like a side hustle for you and all of that. But having said that, how supportive were they, were your parents, as at the time they knew you were, you know, going into your career? My, my, my parents have always been, you know, the, my greatest support. My, my parents, my siblings, mm. my, I have one brother and four sisters, and they always support me. So, like, when I was younger, my dad would, you know, drive me to, like, my church uh, choir rehearsals, mm-hmm. pick me up because, you know, I can't take taxes then. Yeah. Um, and then also, like, uh, when I was in school, they would help me out with, like, oh, do you need to go to this show? Because mm-hmm. I used to dance for Rugged Man on stage, too. So okay. that was a lot. One of my parents has to go with me mm. to the events. Um, so, yeah, they were very supportive. They love that I do it, and yeah. they love the fact that it makes me happy. So whatever made me happy just made them, you know, want to be there for me and support me but the one thing my my dad wanted was please have a degree to back it up mm. just in case just have a degree so that way you don't look like uh, you're uneducated mm-hmm. and he did not like uh you know just 
want me to just do whatever degree he wanted, but he he literally gave me the option to the do option whatever. To choose just whatever. choose whatever. You don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a nurse. Mm. Just do whatever. Get a degree. That's, That's all. very good. Okay. So how how young were you when you came to the States? And how did you Oh, start? I was 19. I was old, old. <laughs> okay, okay. 19. Yeah. <laughs> you, did, you, did you come with your parents or? No, you... I came by myself. Uh, yeah, I'm the rogue agent in my family. Uh, so, <laughs> I literally said I was going to the United States. And my dad looked at me and said, oh, I knew it was going to be you, Frida. <laughs> 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 I knew it was going to be you, mm. yes. So I applied to college in the States. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the admission. Did not tell anybody. <laughs> got the, the school admission and then the day I was going to the embassy I knew I needed my dad's blessing and I called my dad and I said dad he said what's up what did you do again Fred? <laughs> and I said well I'm at uh, Abuja I'm going to the embassy for visa he goes they don't give nobody visa Fred. I come back home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <bless you. laughs> and yes, then I said, I said please pray for me and he said okay then he prayed for me mm. on the phone and he said good luck and yeah I walked That's in good. there with a virgin passport got my visas Great. Mm, let, let, me, let me go to the record, K Pastor, because mm. I don't want to miss yeah. that now. Right. Let's talk about that video. That's a rich video. I haven't seen the video, though. You haven't? You need to see oh, it. You oh. are missing it. I've, I've, I've got to show you. You see, yeah. the, you see, there's things that struck out for me. You see the yacht, you see yeah. the premise. You yeah. see the white guy. So yeah. excuse me, our listeners. You see mm. the you see the Caucasian guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah. And then there's you in the bathroom mm-hmm. with this guy. Oh yeah. I mean, talk to me. That what, was what, hot, hot. what what are people saying? Yeah, I mean, first of all, que pasa yeah. Spanish. Mm-hmm. Yacht. Uh, white guy. Yeah. Bathroom scene. Come on, right. we're Nigerians. Yeah. So, <laughs> you, you you see you the the model that I use, right? Uh I picked him because he had that Spanish kind of look. He's not really Spanish, but that was the best close to looking like a Spanish guy that I could find in Dubai. Um so that's why I picked him. But my people back in the United States, they are very um, you know, welcoming with that. Mm. They're like, oh that that's a hot mo- uh video we mm. love it oh god this is good and the views were just going up but my nigerians <laughs> this is where uh, bring my, it home my nigerians about <laughs> so this was where i started having problems nigerians were like well we cannot play this on the tv stations oh no our people can't see this she's naked in the top i'm like oh no <laughs> but you wasn't oh, <laughs> no i wasn't but to them it was too much skin showing yeah. so yeah. They wouldn't play it. And uh, I mean, a few sta- TV stations did play it, but that was the only bad review I, re- I received from uh, my people. Uh, they didn't want to play that song because, oh, it's too sexy, sexy. It's too this. And I said, listen, there are some parts of the world that don't even wear clothes. Yeah. In reality, they just walk around with nothing. But but let me ask you, you know, I, I see the way you dress. You're a very sexy woman. <laughs> allow me, oh, allow me to say, um, yeah. is this part of your branding? That No, you, I've always uh, been like this. Um, I remember at at, the, at a very young age when I was growing up, I would go play soccer with my brother and his friends. And when I started developing, my mom would say, you got to put on T-shirt, Frida. Please put on some T-shirt. I, I don't like clothes. <laughs> I should be somewhere in the Amazon. Maybe with Amazon people. So, and then it got to a point where my, my mom literally would tell me, your dad and his friends are coming home. Go and put on some clothes. Oh. Ah. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. It's just me. I, I don't know. It's this is just how I've always looked. Yeah. And when I was back home in Nigeria, it was it was crazy because everywhere I walked to, people would look at me and say, Where are you from? And I'm like, Me? They bought me here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I come here, I come from here. I'm not, I'll be again. What are you talking about? Because oh. they look at me, I wear skin pick outfit, I always wear heels and that was back home in Nigeria. Yeah. I would wear crop tops all the time. My belly is showing. You haven't changed. Every time. <laughs> I know. That's who she is. So, I've always dressed. If I showed you my picture of when I was in Nigeria, it's always skimpy clothes. You know what my dad used to say? If I tell him I need money for new clothes, he'd tell me, go take one of my T-shirts. You can make seven outfits that's out a, of that. Knowing you. <laughs> knowing who I am. Yeah. So, oh, that's really nice. <laughs> good, 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 you know, good conversation. Now you're in London. Let's talk about your London at, mm. itinerary. Oh, you yeah. know, yeah. what you doing in London there besides oh promoting you know. so I did record a new um uh, uh song with uh Sammy Young. Um oh. so yeah, yeah. so it's a it's 
my new single. <laughs> We're going to do a music video tomorrow. You came over here to, to, to record with a yeah. big producer. Well, here. Sammy, Sammy is someone you would want to work with because uh, he did the Que Pasa song. Oh, he good. did the video. So, good. Good. of course. Good. 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 I, I like when I hear good things. <laughs> I know. Sa yeah. Sammy's Nigerian? You, yeah, he's Nigerian. Great, great. Yeah. great. That's so all you. I need to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ca carry on. <laughs> yeah, so, so I came over uh, the first day, uh, two days was uh, the recording and then um, you know, now the, 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 the podcast, the, I have the, interview, the, the, I yes. had a performance last night. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's it's all a business trip. I wow. like it. I like it. <laughs> That's I, good. I, I, Thank you. So you have a very tight schedule, isn't it? Yes, yes. When would you be when would you be going? The twenty eighth. I leave on the twenty eighth. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, Josephine, yeah. you think we might today's today's the twenty first, is it? The twenty first. That's you leave in a week's time. Yes. Twenty second. We might, we might, we might have you back. Mm. What, what do you think? We yeah. might, we might have. I you don't back. see why not. If no. the people want me, I'm coming right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I want to wish you good luck with yeah. them, thank you. Kipasa. Thank you. And uh, if you're doing any more performances, please yeah. can you use our platform to let people know? And we want to yes, come out definitely. and see. Definitely. Yeah. So um, yes, uh, my new song is Unstoppable. That's the one we're doing the music video beautiful. tomorrow. So. Yeah. Okay. When it comes out, I definitely, you know, let you guys know and also give you a shout out on social media. Thank you. No just, worries. Just me, you want to be in a music video? I don't mind being in a music video. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wear some clothes. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, no, I'm wearing this now. Wearing clothes today. I've got this big belly. Look at your belly. I use a waist training belt. You have to. Listen. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Three kids later. What? I have to use a waist training belt. Yes. What? Woo! Ask him. Ask Sammy. I wear the belt all the time. Ask him. He'll tell you. Sometimes if I. Uh, when we went to the studio, I had my waist training belt on, and he's like, "Are you serious right now?" I said, "Yes, I'm going with my waist training belt." <laughs> what? Do you have an amazing <laughs> shape. Uh, and amazing, but yeah. even Beyonce, even Beyonce, I, I, I take it when I look at you from here, you, you like Beyonce, right? Because she, 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 let me say it right. <laughs> She's the closest thing that looks closest to you. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Beehive. They're going to come for me. She looks better. She looks better. That's what I was about to say. She looks better. Hey, look. It was very nice. Oh, nice, nice to meet nice you. Nice. Yeah, Thank I you so should, much. Should, uh, Thank you. Nothing.